Hey there, shapeshifters. It's your girl, Zakia Harris, aka Oya Dolu, aka Shapeshifter. This is part two of the video where I'm talking about the construction of femininity through the lens of indigenous spirituality and indigenous civilizations versus what it means to be feminine and how it's constructed through the lens of white supremacy. I spent the first half of the video painting a context and giving light to some very clear examples on the way that uh, the divine feminine principle was viewed in ancient African society. And now I'm going to fast forward to colonization specifically. So um, now these same societies of West Africa, as we know, were colonized, excuse me, the Arabs first. We really want to go there by Arabs, then Portuguese and, 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 and different European civilizations. And the first thing, thing that they did when they landed and they saw all these African women bare chested, being bosses, draped in gold with shrines, holy women, priests, running the marketplace, leaders, fighting on the battlefield. It was like, whoa, wait, ho, wait a minute. We, we don't rock with women like that. You know, these are the societies, the men that came out of Europe who burned their women, who lynched them in some of the first Holocaust that they ever had was their, them destroying their own women because they killed them and they called them witches. We know that this is a society that in, in Christianity through the King James Version, the original sin was predicated by woman. Eve was in the Garden of Eden. She was the one tempting Adam with the apple. So in their creation story, women were the original sin. In our creation story, women were the vital builders of the earth. Come on, people. So when they got to Africa and saw all these women in their power, they were like, oh, we shutting all this shit down. And they came with the Bible and with the gun, right? The, the gun is very clear. You don't do what we say, you gonna die. And we're gonna kill you and we're gonna destroy you. And they destroyed enough people that they were able to reprogram a generation of folks that were disconnected from their indigenous power because they started with the children, right? We reprogram children. That's why the children are so important because those are the ones who are your legacy. And so they started with the children and they, with the, with the Bible, they created their institutions. And I want to be clear as I'm talking about Christianity right now, I'm not talking about Orthodox, um, the origin of Christianity as it originated in East Africa, Ethiopia, where the Ark of the Covenant is, where some of the original Jews are. That's not what I'm talking about. That's its own form of Christianity, the origin of Christianity, which then made its way through Europe and was bastardized through white supremacy and male patriarchy and sold back to Africa. That's the system that I'm talking about. And in this system, one of the first institutions that they then placed in Africa, once they destroyed all of the indigenous institutions, were the first institution that they came with was the institution of the church. That was the first institution. And in the institution of the church, it birthed the next institution, their schools. So the first schools in post-colonial Africa were schools that were created by the church. The same priests who blessed the slave ships, right? I've been to Gory Island. If you've been to Gory Island and you go to the door of no return in Senegal right now, you can go and you can go into the rooms where the slaves were kept. And on the top was the house that the Europeans lived in and one of those rooms was the priests. So the priests were all in, in alignment with the fact that black people weren't human, um, women wasn't shit, um, slavery was okay. In their system, these things were okay. It was okay to have chattel slavery that existed for 400 years. This was part of their system. So this is what their educational system through their systems of the church, their educational system taught the children of Africa taught the next generation. It taught them that their gods were evil, their, their shrines were to be destroyed, that they were born in sin, that from the moment they were born, something's wrong with them. You have to be saved. And the God that is going to save you is a God that looks nothing like you. 
And if you want to have power, you have to accept this new system. And through accepting this new system and accepting our language, accepting our gods, accepting this new cosmology, this new way of looking at the world, then we will give you titles. We will give you the title of being able to be um, have a role in the church. We'll give you a title of being able to be the role, have a translator role between the natives and the Europeans. We'll give you a title of being a clerk in our new government that we're pre-imposing on your government that's forcing your indigenous people to pay taxes on land that they own for generations, but now they're owning it right? The middlemen, the people that were given the power in the new system, the indigenous people that were given the power in the new system went through the church and the schools and the institutions of these systems. And you know who wasn't allowed to go into the institutions? Women. Women weren't allowed to be educated. In many Christian traditions, women still are not allowed to have role, high priest roles. Have you seen a, a, a female pope? These are, these are roles that only men can have. So from the beginning of this system, it eradicated, destroyed, um, raped, and pillaged the role and, and erased the role of the feminine principle and relegated her to a new role. Yeah, you can go to church, but you can't really have power. Yeah, you can kind of learn these things in school, but we're going to give the jobs to these to the men. So we have to make sure that even when we're studying African spirituality and we're being woke and we're African centered, that we're looking at Africa, not through the lens of patriarchy and white supremacy, not through the lens of the 2020 years of that system. We have to look at African traditions through its original way of that predated that system that existed for tens and thousands of years before this 2020 calendar even existed. And so oftentimes we miss the mark because we look at Africa today and say, oh, look at the patriarchy in Africa. Oh, look at the way Africans treat their women. Again, I'm not saying these things don't exist, but what I'm saying is based on the principle of Sankofa, if we're really going to go back and fetch it, in order to move forward, we have to be clear on what we're fetching and what we're not. We have to be clear on what is African, what is indigenous, what is sacred, what is part of our sacred lineages, and what is patriarchy, what is capitalism, what is white supremacy, and what is not, in order for us to move forward. And so in this linear approach of education, the notion is you're born in sin, you don't have any value, you have to go to school to get your value, and if you can regurgitate everything that we've taught you in school, then you will get a piece of paper that gives you the opportunity to have a role in society that allows you to navigate the marketplace. And your mastery level is built on your regurgitation level. Mastery is, we're telling you this what it is what it is, can you repeat it back to us? And if you can, you're a master. Versus the indigenous society that's saying, oh, sweetheart, you were born with all the gifts, all the talents, all the strengths, all the magic, the ashe, the wisdom. You were born with it. And our, our job is to make sure that your ancestors, to make sure that your parents, to make sure that the community, the village is reminding you of your gifts every stage at all the different levels of rites of passage that you have, reminding you of your gifts, reminding you of your purpose, saying if you want to go to school, your purpose in going to school is to sharpen and refine those things. There's no regurgitation. You're already born as God, as the God that it created you above, as above, so below, you are created as God, not as you are created in original sin. And so Fast forward to today, many of us who are living in that system, myself included, we're living in that system. But we also are at this opportunity where we're deciding what of that system needs to die and what are these ancient systems that we need to reshape and evolve and utilize and, and Sankofa go fetch so we can examine them in order to decide what it is that we want to build. And so what I'm clear on is 
that linear, I went to college, I got this job, or I've been doing this one thing, and so this one thing is supposed to be the thing that carries me and allows me to success in the marketplace. Now we're seeing that it's insufficient. Now you're seeing that maybe the one thing that you've been doing, that, that industry doesn't exist. Maybe you're seeing that that industry does exist, but it's dying. Maybe you're seeing that, yeah, I've gotten some monetary wealth from that thing, but I'm not fulfilled. Maybe you're seeing that I've gotten some monetary work from that thing, but I'm sick. I'm not living a purpose-driven life. I'm not living a life of joy. There's other parts of who I am that I want to move forward. There's other gifts that I have to share that I want to express. And I'm trying to, str I'm struggling on how to express them because I've been relegated to this linear one thing, one thing mindset. And so the invitation as we go back and fetch it is to fetch that all of who you are, all of the gifts, and gifts to me is an acronym that represents growth, innate, fulfilling, and tempo. With everything that you're doing, you're always growing at it. It's innate. It's in you. You were born with it. You can lose all track of time, but it's fulfilling you. It fits your natural tempo. It fits your pace that you're always bringing your gifts to the world. And your gifts are not just the check boxes that they give you in college and tell you to choose a major. Your gifts are not just limited to the job market and the job titles that they've been giving you in check boxes. Your gifts are actually every aspect of who you are. And many times, some of us don't even know what our gifts are because we've been so programmed in this linear approach that no one asked, that we haven't had a chance to just sit back and, and, and marinate on what that is. And now is the opportunity. As we architect the future that we want to see, the invitation and the opportunity is to get really clear right now on what they are and how you can express them through all aspects of your being. I call myself a shapeshifter. One of my gifts is to be a force of transformation. I'm a force of transformation as an artist when I step on stage. I'm a force of transformation when I coach my coaching clients to move them from stagnation to activation. I'm a force of transformation when I work with nonprofits and I'm creating curriculum and educating and teaching students and moving them to understand their power. I'm a transformer. I'm a spark. I'm a catalyst. I set shit off. That's my gift. That's what people pay me to do. Even when they don't pay me with my daughter, who's all up in the clouds, I'm and I'm setting her off to understand who she is and who her divine purpose is. It expresses itself through art. My gifts express themselves through business. They express themselves through creativity, but creativity is not my gift. My gift is so much bigger than that. And so the invitation for you is to figure out your gifts beyond a job title, your gifts beyond an industry, and figure out how you can channel those gifts into all of the industries that, that, that are in alignment with that and figure out day-to-day -day money, because we got them day-to-day -day monthly bills, I have seasonal projects that I do, and I have passive income streams. And I'm able to channel all of my gifts into all of these buckets that allow me to navigate the marketplace in a way that with the Rona or without the Rona, I'm still out here winning, I'm still out here thriving, I'm still out here shining. And so that's what we have to do, because this is one shift. There are going to be other global pandemics. There are going to be other changes in the marketplace. For those of us around in the re who remember the recession of 2008, 2009, I remember that. I had to shift then, right? We're going to be having, we're going to have to shift. And if you know who you are and you know yourself and you know what you bring and you're able to translate it through all these different mechanisms that regardless of what the dominant paradigm does or changes, it's, you might shift but it's not going to break you. It's not going to put you out of business because you're building and cultivating something that's bigger than them, that's rooted in your, your lineage of your power and your purpose that they didn't build and they can never take away. So that's that for today, Shapeshifters. I hope that you'll take some time to do some self-discovery and exploration. If you want to go deeper, you can join my next um, coaching, 90-day coaching intensive, where we're going to be going deep into our career pivots and lifestyle design, as well as spirituality and creativity. That program is starting on May 17th. If you want more information, check the link in the bio. Until then, keep shifting.